Hello and welcome to Sport for Business. We're joined today by Susan Spence, the co-founder of a company called Softco, who've made a bit of a splash in the world of Irish sport and hockey in particular. This week, they have announced that they are giving equal support to the men's hockey team to match that which they've been giving to the women's team for the last number of years. You're very welcome to Sport for Business, Susan. Thank you, Rob. It's a great day today. I have to say, and we're really excited about uh, expanding our sponsorship to include the men's teams. It is great. We'll talk about that in a little bit. I want to bring us back to the genesis of this in the first place. I described it in the piece that we wrote about this partnership as having come from a pitch side conversation. Now, you're steeped in hockey yourself. Tell us a little bit about how you married the business and the sporting side of your passions. Look, it made great business sense for Softco because the World Cup was happening. It was in London. You know, we were playing against England, um, you know, our markets for our own software is in the UK and also we're playing against the USA, another big market for us. So from a business perspective, it really made sense. But that isn't where it started. It actually started with myself having a conversation with Joan Morgan, who she play, her and I played together, I would say nearly back in the 1920s, but there you go. Uh, I was her goalkeeper. And um, she just said to us, look, we're going to the World Cup and we're going to be the only team without a sponsor. Can you help? So that's really where it started. And we said, absolutely. And then it was exciting from there because they had such great success, uh, you know, all the way through there. And obviously our, our sponsorship um, increased and everything we did with the team then completely expanded. So it was, it was really great, great relationship. And the story was magnificent. The, the, the unexpected trip to a World Cup final, the first from an Irish team across any sport. From a, from a sponsor's point of view, obviously you got a lot of bang for your buck, but you're in professional services. You're not trying to sell cupcakes or, or pints of beer or encourage people across the threshold of a consumer store. So how did it work in terms of making it make sense from a business? Well, I mean, a lot of things we get involved with, Rob, um, they, we don't do them for what I would call fully commercial reasons. We just don't. A lot of the sponsorships we do, for instance, we sponsor St. Mary's Rugby Club. Uh, we are involved with Paul Nolan Racing. So there's a lot of the things that we do are community based. Uh, we have operations also in the US and in Finland, and we try and do some sponsorships that make sense there in the local community. So. Again, we don't necessarily do it for those reasons. Uh, hockey, of course, is close to my heart because I played it. Um, but from our perspective, it has made a lot of sense. The World Cup made sense, which was, and again, we didn't expect uh, what happened. We didn't expect them to be as successful. And um, what the funny thing about it was, we were having a cup of coffee, myself and Anton Scott, who's the CEO, and he played hockey for Ireland. He was a great hockey player. And uh, we bumped into the Dutch team. And I think was, this was very early on in their hands. We said, we'll see you in the final. And they kind of went, oh, yes, of course. And that's exactly what happened. So it was absolutely great fun. It was fantastic. Uh, but from there, um, certainly it is all about activation. It's not about just putting your logo on the jersey. It's about what can we do to, you know, to, to you know, contribute in terms of the community. From my perspective, it was how do we get more people to play hockey? And that's one thing we saw after the World Cup. A lot of people picked up a hockey stick that wouldn't have done prior to that. And that was fantastic. Uh, but the other thing that has been good, and probably during the pandemic, we've seen it more than any other time, was that we involved the team, uh, plus kind of our own brand ambassadors, which is Aisha and Katie Mullen. And we got involved in a steps challenge with them for charity. We got involved in the bucket challenge where, you know, we incorporated very, very focused on incorporating the regional clubs. So Waterford, Boyne, they were very successful in the bucket challenge. We even included our other brand ambassadors. We had Paul Nolan down in Wexford, Paul and James Nolan, trying to do a bucket challenge, challenge with the hockey stick and ball. Not easy to do, as you can imagine. Uh, so a lot of that was fantastic fun. It included people in Softco, it included some of the wider community. And I think sponsorships has to be more than just your logo on the shirt. It actually also has to be about uh, it being good for, the, for your own uh, employees, for the community, 
and also to involve your customers as well. And that's where it can work really, really well. It's something I've always believed in that doing the right thing actually ends up being the best thing as well for, uh, you know, for yourself and for the business and, and for the staff and the team that are working there. We've interviewed the likes of Nikki Daly. We've worked with yeah. Roisin Upton on a number of occasions and all of them to a, you know, to a single woman, they've been brilliant at actually telling their own story in a way that people really engaged with. You've got to translate that now into the men's side. Do you know, is the men's team going to be as good in front of the camera and in front of a classroom of kids? Well, look, they have a hard act to follow, I have to say, because I also brought uh, uh, Katie Mullen to talk to a room full of 200 female entrepreneurs. And um, the, unfortunately, the organiser had her not speak last, had her speak just after lunch. And of course, it ruined the afternoon because everybody wanted to talk. And a lot of the things that the team did are very transferable to business. A lot of their, their messages, you know, such as the way there was no prima donnas, you know, such as the way they're very much, you know, when they went out onto the pitch, they had a big smile on their face, how they handled adversity. All of that is very transferable into business, business practices that we have today. Now, so whether the men are, are, are going to be able to do the same thing, of course they are. I've met a few of them. We had a great photograph up there in the Dublin mountains with them. Uh, absolutely fabulous guys and I know from Trevor there's great talent coming through and I think we would like to have as much uh, enjoyment and fun with them as we've had with the women's team and I absolutely know we will. The expansion to covering both teams with that equal mm -hmm. amount of both financial, um, moral, emotional support, every everything that goes with that um, is in many ways unique. There was no template for this happening on, on such an equal financial footing at any rate, um, either here in Ireland and, and perhaps even wider, wider afield. How did it come about? Was it something that, that you spotted as an opportunity or was it a, a call out from, uh, you know, from hockey in the same way as it was in the early days of the women's deal? No, it was actually um, quite different. Uh, myself and Jim Coffey, who's the other um, owner of Softco, we were actually looking through some photographs, um, probably I think it was mid during the summer. And we were kind of proudly looking at, you know, the women's team. And I think in the paper, the same thing was the men's team and it hadn't been as successful as they wanted to be. And it was very stark that they had no logo. And it was really a conversation between us where we said, God, doesn't it, you know, it doesn't look right. And uh, Jim kind of said, why don't we phone up Trevor and find out, you know, are, have they got a sponsor coming down the line? So it was something as simple as that. And I called Trevor and he said, a few ideas, but not really. And then we kind of said to ourselves, well, what, wouldn't it be great if we had both teams? And wouldn't it be fantastic to do that? So that's when we um, made an offer to Hockey Ireland and said, we'd like to sponsor the men's uh, senior team and development squad the same way as we are with the women's teams. And they said, which was exactly the way we were thinking they'd like it on an equal footing. And we said, absolutely. That's exactly what we want to do. There are sporting CEOs who are watching this now who are just aching to find a Susan Spence and a Joe Coffey to actually sort yeah. of have a, you know, have a look at, at, at doing something similar in their sport. But, you know, of course, you're, you're setting the rules at the moment. You're setting the template. What plans have you got initially to actually bring the two squads together to actually, uh, you know, try leverage this for the good of the overall sport? Yeah, look, we've a lot of really good ideas. Um, the announcement has only been made today with the men's. Uh, we're talking to um, uh, to Hockey Ireland about how all the different um, programs overlap. And, you know, there's certain things we'll be doing which will incor incorporate customers and incorporate similar type activities, fundraising, charity activities as well. So we'll be working through that over the next few months. And as you said, there's been no template for it. So we'll certainly enjoy creating one. It has been a pleasure watching what you've been able to do with the women's team over the last number of years. It will be a pleasure following up uh, over the course of the next 12 months and beyond with what you do with the men to the same extent. Uh, for the moment, though, uh, thank you so much uh, for taking the time to be with us today, Susan Spence. Thank you very much, Rob.